everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. This is my bass oboe, but this isn't just any bass oboe. This is a bass oboe that I modeled and 3D printed myself. You can see that all the keys here and the body are completely 3D printed. So this is a project I've wanted to do for a very long time. I am a clarinetist first, but I've always really loved the sound of the low oboes, especially English horn and bass oboe. And I've always really wanted a bass oboe. But unfortunately, they are very expensive instruments. The cheapest ones I've seen have been very broken, beat up instruments that have still sold for a few thousand dollars. So they're not very accessible. So it's always been a long-term goal of mine to make an affordable, easy to manufacture bass oboe. And this is a big step towards that. In today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this instrument, how I designed it, some of the cool quirks and features of this instrument, and then I'm gonna give a play sample. So without further ado, let's get started. So you may notice that this instrument looks a little bit different than some other bass oboes you've seen, not just with regards to the keys, but also just the general design of the instrument. So this instrument is inspired by some of the larger bore instruments out there, specifically instruments like the hecophone and the lupophone. I really love the sound of these larger bore instruments, so that's what I was trying to capture when designing this instrument. You can see this instrument actually uses a hecophone reed. It's roughly the same size as a bassoon reed, a little bit narrower, um, but it's very different from a traditional bass oboe reed, which is narrower still. You can see, uh, just even looking at the vocal, uh, the bore of this instrument is very large, which helps contribute to that nice, full, uh, almost saxophone-like sound, while still having that bass oboe quality. Now, going down the instrument, starting at the top, you can see that it has two octave vents, just like any oboe. Uh, this is a semi-automatic octave system. So that means that you have a thumb key and you would press that throughout the upper register except for uh, E flat through C sharp. And when you get to A, you would also press the second octave key and that'll open up this vent. But you don't have to take your finger off the back key. That's what the semi-automatic system does. Going further down the instrument, you can see instead of having a half hole mechanism, it actually just has an open hole. And the reason I did that was mostly just for simplicity, as half hole mechanisms tend to be a little bit tricky to get right. And fortunately, that works pretty well. Further down the instrument, uh, you can see that both C natural and B flat are fingered with the side keys, similar to how it is on the hecophone, at least some of the earlier instruments. Uh, so what you do, let's say you're playing a B flat, so you would finger an A, and you just hit the side key, a lot like uh, the upper register of a clarinet or a saxophone. And same thing with C, you would finger a B, and you press that same key. Notice how it's one key for both notes. And the reason I can do that is because I actually 3D printed an articulated mechanism. So this is the first time I've done that. Uh, so you can see there's a little adjustment screw there. And again, that's also the first time I've had an adjustment screw on a plastic key. And when I close the second finger key, it actually closes that C key. So that was a really complicated mechanism to design, but fortunately it worked quite well. So that was one of the uh, things that came out of this project. I learned I can do more complicated mechanisms like this. Going further down the instrument, uh, fingering is pretty much the same as any other oboe. There's your G sharp, uh, F sharp with your first finger. You have fork F, you have the sliver key, and you also have a left F, just like on a lot of uh, high-end oboes. Looking at the pinky cluster, it looks a little weird, but it's the same as any standard oboe. So this is your C key, this is your E flat key, and this is your C sharp key. Looking at the left cluster, this is your low B, this is an alternate E flat key, and again, this is the F key. Now, the only part of this instrument that's not 3D printed is the vocal. As you can see, this is made out of brass in the traditional method. Now, I previously made a video about making a vocal for a hecophone, and while this isn't the same vocal, it was made using the same process. Now, in addition to 3D printed components, there are also a few non-3D printed components on this instrument. To start off, the pads on the upper joint are made of neoprene foam, which is this black rubbery foam that actually seals quite well, and it's actually just glued to the surface of the keys, and that's what seals against the pad. For the lower joint, I actually used leather pads, and I was able to do this by using Music Medic Neo pads. So these are actually self-leveling pads that are installed using super glue, so you don't have to heat up the pad cup and float them in like traditional pads, which means you can actually use them on plastic pad cups like this. And these pads work really well. I'm actually really surprised 
I'm definitely going to be using them more on future projects. For the rods, they're just a pretty standard two millimeter stainless steel rod. Um, pretty easy to get and works pretty well. The springs are actually coil springs like you would tend to see on a pen. Um, a little bit non-traditional, but they work again quite well. Uh, obviously the bocal is not 3D printed. And as far as that goes, the only other part that's not 3D printed on this instrument would be the key corks and the tenon, which is wrapped in string. Another cool feature of this instrument I'd like to talk about is how I did some of the longer rods on this instrument. Now obviously with a 3D printer, you're very limited in how big you can build some of the parts. And for that reason, things like the body joints are made in sections and then glued and pinned together. But keys are a little bit more tricky. Uh, it wouldn't really be practical to just glue plastic pieces together because it'd be too much flex uh, throughout the length of the entire key. Uh, the best example of a long key on this instrument would be the uh, the rod for low B and left hand E flat. Uh, so you can see the touch piece is up here and then the, the pad cup for the low B is down here. Uh, so what I've done is I've 3D printed the pad cup and the touch piece and the key arm, uh, but the rod itself is actually a piece of carbon fiber tube and that's what actually translates the force. So that means that even though it has 3D printed touch pieces, it's actually a fairly stiff key and it doesn't have a lot of flex to it. So that worked really well, and I'm definitely going to be using that on other projects like the Octo Contra clarinets. Now to give you an idea of what this instrument sounds like, I'm going to play a chromatic scale. Now, as it currently sits, the instrument only goes to low B. However, I am actually working on a low A extension. So is that something you want to see? Consider subscribing to this channel to see that and some of my other cool projects. Now, if you watch this channel a lot, you'll know that I like three things. I like unusual instruments, I like 3D printing, and I like pushing the bounds of what's possible. And all three of those things are captured in this instrument. This was something that I wasn't even really sure was possible. And this prototype is certainly far from perfect. There's definitely a lot of things that I will need to correct on later versions. But I think this really shows the possibilities of what can be done with 3D printed instruments. This is an instrument that is otherwise very hard to access that I was able to make myself using a 3D printer and some pretty standard off-the-shelf parts and components. So it really shows the possibilities of 3D printed instruments in general. So now that I've talked a little bit more about the instrument, I want to play a little bit of repertoire for you. And the piece that I've chosen is the Heckle Foam Solo from Salome. Uh, now please keep in mind, I am not an oboe player whatsoever. I primarily play clarinet, and then I also double a little bit mostly on saxophone and fife. Uh, so keep in mind that most of the issues you hear are from the player, not the instrument. <laughs> So overall, I am very happy with how this instrument sounds. I think there's a little bit of things to work on. The intonation isn't perfect, but I think it really captures that large, more bass oboe sound that I was looking for. So I think overall the concept is sound, and after a bit of refinement, this could potentially be a really good instrument. So I'm excited to work on this project further and use some of the ideas I've implemented in this project in some of my other projects. So thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about this instrument in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, everyone, I hope you all have a wonderful day.